My world is filled with serpents. We're going to explore that world from the rainforests of South America. Ooh, you're feisty. To the swamps of Louisiana, a brand new water moccasin, but it is armed with venom. The deserts of Africa. If you don't get the anti-venom, you're going to die if you're bit by the snake. And every place in between. She doesn't like you very much. I'll take you on a world tour, and we'll look at some of the most incredible animals on our planet. Oh, man, you're not a nice snake. On my most spectacular Jeff Corwin experience. A toad. Hi, I'm Jeff Crowen, and I want to welcome you to my Snake-tacular. Now, the object of this special episode is to revisit some of our best snake encounters. I also want to take you around the world, a world filled with my favorite creatures, you've guessed it, snakes. Now, as you probably know from watching the show, I love these creatures. I am fascinated by snakes. And what I really like to do, my most favorite thing, is to take information on these animals and share them with people, people just like yourselves. Now, I can't think of a better way for us to launch our snake-tacular special than with this North American beauty. Of course, if you want to identify the snake, just look at that stack of dead skin at the end of its tail, and it tells you that it's a rattlesnake. This one, the Western Diamondback Rattler. And out of the roughly 30 species of rattlesnakes in the New World, this one can be potentially the most dangerous. Now, this viper has a cousin, very different in appearance, very beautiful. To find it, we have to go to a small island off the coast of Brazil. Welcome to Queimada Grande. No humans live here, and no wonder, because this island is crawling with deadly vipers. It's a four-hour boat ride from here to the mainland, and the Brazilian government requires us to bring anti-venom. Wow, look at that. Look at beauty. Okay, that's a good place for you. Between the leaves of this bromeliad is this beautiful snake. Okay, I'm gonna be quiet because I need to concentrate. These vipers are very small and very quick, so they're very tricky to catch. Oh, my gosh. Woo, woo, you're feisty. You're feisty. See, the problem with vipers is that they, by nature, when left alone, you know, like to mind their own business. But when they're pressed or when they feel threatened, they are quick to struggle, quick to strike. And I don't want to be bit by the snake, but I also don't want the snake to injure himself. Okay, and he could do that. He could easily puncture his own flesh with those two very large fangs to the front of his mouth. I'm using my fingers i've got my thumb and middle finger on either side of the jaw i've got my index finger supporting his head but he's really moving around a lot i'm afraid he's going to injure himself so i'm going to let him go and that's okay because there's another snake right behind you by the way i'm describing how i'm holding the snake that by no means is instruction for you to go capture your own snake there we go Right behind you, another one. Come here. When they told us that this island was crawling with snakes, to be honest, I really didn't believe them. But there were snakes, and they were everywhere. Look at that. I'm now holding him very gently. He's tasting you with his tongue. What's it like to be a snake with those tongues tasting the world? Oh, see how he rattles his tail like that? He ain't saying, dinner time. That's no dinner bell. That is a, a warning. And what's interesting is that there is a viper related to this snake, which has taken that warning step even further. And that is to have a rattle on the end of its tail. But this snake doesn't have a rattle. What it would rely on are the leaves and sticks around that tail, which will make a, a flickering sound when he feels alarmed. There you go, you precious, precious snake.
My trip to Ecuador was just the opposite of my experience in Brazil. The snakes weren't in the trees. I couldn't find any anywhere. And then, when I finally did find one, I was just coming across this path, and suddenly, this very cantankerous serpent has appeared there. What are you? Come here, buddy. Look at you. Beautiful snake. Man, look at the colors on him. Ugh. Man, I've never seen a cat-eyed snake move that fast. And there he goes. All right, so the cat-eyed snake got away. But you know what? Later, I found a real treasure. in front of me, you can see a spectacular looking snake. It's come down from the canopy, tomato, worm, green, vine snake, beautiful vine snake. While traveling in places like India and Southeast Asia, I have captured snakes that look just like this one right here. It's called convergence. Convergence is when two species in two different parts of the world evolve similar survival skills or adaptations to meet the challenges of the environment. They come from unique origins. They don't share a similar genetic or biological path. But what they share in common is they survive the same way, whether that's eating a particular resource or avoiding a predator, but the way they're surviving is similar. Do not bite my fingers and we will release him. And there he goes. Well, look, there you go, look at that. Look at that, look at that. It just hangs out there, you could walk by and never know that this was attached to a two-meter snake. You'd think it was the extension of a vine or the tendril of a philodendron, but it is a wonderful snake. Great stuff, Ecuador, isn't it? Hope you're having fun. I picked the most inaccessible part of Panama to go snake hunting in, an area called the Darien. No roads to get there, you have to fly in by chartered plane. But it was there that I found one of the most amazing looking snakes I've ever seen. Look what's moving across this wheel. It is a spectacular snake. This is an eyelash viper. And although they're not particularly aggressive, they are very, very venomous. <gasps> I forgot they've got a very good reach. This is why you have to be so careful, you know? When you're working with venomous snakes, if you screw up, you can be dead. And you can't blame the snake. It's very easy to blame the snake. There we go. Oh my gosh. Look right above his eyes. You can see the row of scales. Beautiful snake. Hence the term eyelash viper. Not because it has hair. Reptiles don't have hair. They have scales, okay? And look at the camouflage. These are the prettiest vipers you will find in the New World. And they come in all sorts of colors. You can get them orange. You can get them yellow. You can get them green. This one is cinnamon. And if you think those bands of cinnamon colored scales on the top of its body are beautiful, look at its belly. Look at that. What a beautiful snake. You know, I don't care how much of an aphidiophobiac you are how much of an unnatural fear of snake is coiled up in your body. You can't help but to look at this creature, whether you like him or don't like him, and see a beautiful animal, brilliant coloration, with eyelashes. Eyelashes not of hair, but of scales.